All right, welcome to the Straight Red Card. And uh, go ahead and like and subscribe and all that jazz because we got a lot to talk about tonight um, because we're covering the U.S. versus Honduras, Honduras versus U.S. It was at Honduras. And, you know, a lot of us were really nervous going into this game. And um, I was one of them. I was sweating it out, man. Uh, I was the guy on airplane. You know, sweating, <laughs> right, flying the plane, you know, seriously, that was me. And here we are. We managed to pull it off. And um, let's start with the coverage, Brett. Let's start with the coverage, because I think it's something you mentioned, which I think is a very, very uh, a key point here. The coverage by the CBS guys is mm -hmm. a lot different than the coverage from the Fox guys. Like, there's no negativity hardly over at Fox, except for the occasional moment when uh, Lawless gets a, you know, like a dildo up his butt for some reason. And we never know when that reason is. But here, well, or during yeah. halftime, these guys were shit in their drawers. They were like, this was the worst first half I've seen forever. Well, we I, all thought yeah. that. I think, uh, I think Fox's coverage is generally along the lines of... Um, <sighs> Oh, you know, you know, he, so and so could do a lot better, but he had a good game. You know, he made a lot of good possession. He passed it around at this, so it's like he they they kind of tiptoe around and they say like, well, here's a negative, but then here's a bunch of positives. Despite the fact that there's a bunch of negatives that outweigh the positives, yeah. the uh, Paramount crew, I, I thought, I think is absolutely phenomenal. By by any means, they're just entertaining to listen to. Their pregame, I, I watched the entire hour pregame, which I've never done for any of the other shows. Well, not recently because it's like. <laughs> But uh, they're, they're fun to listen to. They're uh, definitely educated in the sport, obviously, because they played the fucking sport. Right. Um, and yeah, they, they, they tell it they tell it like it is. And that's what's great about it. I'm not saying Lawless isn't educated in the sport. No, I'm, no, of course. But, exactly. uh, you know, sometimes you have to wonder. <laughs> you have to wonder. He's got a different set of opinions. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with him talking his mind. Just it's not always right. <laughs> yeah, he he, you have to admit he does talk out of his ass a lot um so sure, it, it, great talking points for us so i'm not going to complain yeah this is a tale of two halves i called brett yeah, at yeah. halftime and i said did i call you i thought i called God, you. My phone. you texted me you sent you sent about uh about 10 text messages in a, in a two minutes period <laughs> basically saying that was garbage this is shit the biggest pile of dog poo ever it just yeah. constantly like 10 text messages, bam, bam, bam. I couldn't even, I was actually going to give you a call because I'm like, dude, I can't do this over text message. <laughs> and you gave me a call. I'm like, well, geez, apparently he can't type that fast either. Yeah, no, I was just so astonished about how bad the first half was. Horrible. I was like, are you kidding? Okay, here's what I sent you. Pukish. It, this is in succession with you not responding at all. Mm -mm. Pukish, vomit worthy, big pile of dookie garbage the empty empty bucket formation wholesale changes coming don't like taking brooks off take mckenzie off so i got one of those three those things wrong mm -hmm. <laughs> but i don't think the last one was i think the last one came when we found out the changes were coming the point is i mean the 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 widest asshole would have been ripped tonight <laughs> if had this continued Burhalter could not have walked home. They would have had to take him home in a barrel because I would have ripped him the biggest butthole ever. <laughs> I'm curious. So I, I've got to I've got to say uh, I, I applaud the fact that we tried something new. I got to also say slow. There were a clap. lot. Of, <laughs> there were a lot of people or personnel choices that I raised an eyebrow to, mm -hmm. and for good reasons. One. We've said this a number of times because it's happened early on in Berhalter's tenure. I'm sorry, Adams is not a right back or wing back. He's not a right wing back. It's just not, it's not, it's not there. It's not what he does. Nice, nice he's try. Played. Yeah, and he tried to play it, but it's just not his spot. Why on earth would we have wasted him, his, his, his ability on the ball as a wing back? Why, especially given. All the other games, all the other games that we've ever replaced a wing back with somebody, it's always been Acosta. So why not play if you want to play a, a number six or six there? Why not play him there? But why wouldn't you have started Yedlin? Boggles my yeah. mind. Yeah, I even told said 
at the beginning of the game, if somebody in, in this lineup of we we got the starting roster, we didn't get the positions at the beginning. You couldn't figure you know. it out. But I said, if someone's going to play that right back, it's got to be a cost. So sure, surely you cannot waste Adams out wide there. In, but, you know, that's the problem with that. It was one of Greg's little gimmicky little fucking things, right? Mm-hmm. He was going to have have Adams play all up and down that right wing yep. like a nut bag as almost a midfielder slash right back. And, you know, it, it, it didn't work. It was ugly. It was disgusting. You could see Berhalter and Adams going at it at the sideline. They were arguing during one of the injury breaks. You're like, oh, something's not working mm-hmm. here. Um, well, I mean, yeah. On top of that, you with with you taking Adams out of the midfield, that left you Acosta and Sands to run the midfield. Now I know that Berhalter probably wanted uh, uh, Adams and uh, uh, Bello to get up and down, offer that width and attack and the pressure and creativity to an extent, but there was such a, a huge gap between our top three and our 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 sixes who are practically playing uh, just slightly higher up center backs at that point. There was, yeah, I mean, there was nothing there. That was it, such a, a bad personnel choice to have three sixes playing in the midfield. There was n- no midfield. <laughs> there was just no midfield. You know, and right? it, the only thing that would have pro- made it better is if they, instead of playing Bellow, they played Yule. Then we would have had four sixes. Yay. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Let's not even think about that. No, seriously, dude. We that's why I just called it the empty, mm-hmm. empty bucket formation. Um, because I'm it's not like it's the empty bucket. I'm just mm-hmm. saying it's the empty, empty bucket. We had Sam's totally in over his head's he- head there, Acosta in the first half, totally in over his head, mm-hmm. and they had to cover so much fucking space. And that's why when the first goal came. You can't necessarily blame that on Brooks because one of the three center backs had to make the decision to come out Mm. to play that extra defensive midfield spot to clog up a hole. And when he fucked up clogging up a hole, that's when we got scored on. That's on Berhalter. That's not on Brooks. Well, I I, I see it twofold. Uh, I see it partially on Brooks because if you're going to commit that much, um, it's almost better since it was outside the box, outside the 18 and everything. Like, yeah, it would be a dangerous foul, but you might as well take the player out at that point because he didn't. It opened it up, and Bello got caught ball watching, and they got the easy goal. So if I'm Brooks, I'm thinking even if I go up here and I fuck this up and, and they get going forward, I've got four guys behind me. He didn't. He had three guys behind him because mm. Bello snoozed, yeah. and that's why Bello – was off after the first half. That's one of the reasons he was off. Brooks was off for a different reason. Which, reason. Yeah. Brooks was off for, for I don't think it was just that goal. Brooks no. was not having a good game up until he was, his passes then. weren't he weren't he wasn't completing his passes. It just it wasn't it wasn't a good match for him. And that could just be the fact that he's played so much, you know, recently. I uh, just think maybe he forgot how hard Conca well, is. You know, you know, I take that back. He he didn't play all that much recently. Actually, he didn't play against El Salvador. He's only really played against Canada. That's not a good excuse on my part. No, it isn't. I mean, the fact is that Brooks hadn't played a lot. The, the times he's played so far, he was an issue with the goal versus Canada. Mm-hmm. Now that I've watched the replay, he was an issue with this goal today, although I don't totally blame either no. of the goals on him. I'm just saying... You know, because of the gimmicky setup that we had that Greg put in, and it was gimmicky. And that's why you don't need to fiddly fuck around Mm -hmm. that much. You don't. You need to make adjustments, but you don't need to fucking change the world. Today, we tried to change the world, and it failed miserably and fell on its face. So there you go. I think think one one of our biggest issues in that first half was our energy level and just our thought process. For whatever reason, it just seemed like the U.S. was running off about 60% of their thought processes, you know, how quick they play with the ball, how they make their passes, their decision-making as a whole. They just sort of collect the ball, they turn, they find the person they want to pass, and they just sort of like softly lob it up over to them. And Honduras pressured. They pressured hard on him and uh, killed a lot of the space. And there were a lot of times, especially when Turner had the ball, that I was really squeamish about. Um, but yeah, it just, it just seemed like they, 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 that first half for whatever reason, 
they just needed some smelling salts or something. Something needed to wake them up because they were not having it. I don't think it was just that. I think everybody looked uncomfortable because of what the formation we were playing. Could have been, but we... you could still show some fucking energy, though. There was no think... energy. I thought they were still spazzes. I mean, no, I heard. Nope. I, no, I'm sorry. No, I heard that from Mo too. He said, "Where's the urgency?" What do you mean? They're spazzing out all over the field and fucking up left and right. There's They're a difference. Between, there's a difference between fucking up and being a spaz and having energy playing towards the game. So, like, the, oddly enough, with I thought Bello had probably the the best energy on the field. I'm not saying that he made the right decisions, and I'm definitely calling him out for ball watching on that first goal. But everybody else just sort of like lacks a daisy, you know, moved around slowly. It just it just didn't seem that they were there. And now the Pulisic tried to do what he could do. I thought Pepe did what he could do. Even Sargent to that matter. I mean, I didn't think Sargent had that great of a so you're saying, But I just thought the, I thought the energy level just was not there. For, not for those three guys you just mentioned, it wasn't. Pulisic. That's what I just said. Sar- Sargent. So, said they okay, did what there's, they could there's, do. There's, there's three guys. And then you mentioned Bello wasn't. I don't think Acosta was like Mm. laying around. I don't think Sands was just, you know, moseying. I think if you want to say that our center backs were moseying, yeah, they were moseying. But other than them, I don't know. I think we're, I think we'll have to disagree. We'll have to agree to disagree on this point. I don't think that the energy level is there. And I think that was apparent. And once the three subs came in in the second half, I think the energy level went through the roof. And I think that's what made the difference. All right. I do. I do want to say one thing before we branch off into the second half because I think uh, that I think there's a clear cut here. Uh, but I think uh, one thing I thought was hysterical in that uh, after that first half and during the coverage, since I didn't I didn't bring it up earlier because it didn't make any sense at the time. But Dempsey made a comment. Uh, he's like, you know, hey, because somebody's like, uh, uh, they're like, you know, hey, Dempsey, you feel like you still have 15 minutes in you? He goes, yeah, oh. put, put me in for 15 minutes. I'll put some shots on goal. I'm <laughs> and, sure. And that's, but I know it, 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 it obviously is just in jest, but that's that's the mentality that you want, that you want somebody to have. And that, that came in the second half. People started shooting the ball on goal. It didn't have to be the best shots on goal, but there were shots on goal. And guess what? Some of them created opportunities. Some of them created goals. Yeah. I mean, listen, the big difference in a lot of ways is not only the formation in the first half mm-hmm. versus the second half, which the guys were much more comfortable in the second half because they knew the gimmicks were over and they could get back to ball. But I also saw a, like a performance inhibition issue with certain players in the first half, a performance mm-hmm. inhibition, particularly Josh Sargent. I know the guy puts in work. I know he works, but the dude's got no killer instinct at all. Zero killer instinct. There were at least two times where he either gave up the ball too quickly or instead of charging at the goal and then crossing, he just said, I'm just going to sit right here and no, take it at the goal, force guys to come at you, then make the cross. Hmm. That was really disappointment. Uh, His his performance was was disappointing. It definitely wasn't his best game. He did put some effort into it, but that effort without productivity is just effort. And that's not, that's not what we need. Uh, yeah, definitely wasn't his best game, and uh, we'll see later on the grades that I gave him a uh, not so nice grade. Also, but... <laughs> also, regardless of whether you're talking first or second half, but it was predominantly the first half. Needless fouls, over aggression beyond any. It wasn't needed. I know we want to get out there and you know be aggressive and physical, but some of those fouls were just we gave you know them set pieces where it wasn't necessary to do that so that's the other thought i had about the first half and i also got- thought that when it came to some of those fouls we just, there was it was it was it was concacaf i think and i'm not saying that we were the only one that got concacaf i think honduras got concacaf a number of times too the refs the refing was just inconsistent but at least it was inconsistent across the board and he was not card happy. That was the best thing I noticed about the ref this entire game is that he let the game play consistently and he did not card people. I'm fine with that. There wasn't any card worthy fouls, in my opinion. But dude, I think if you go back and look at the fouls, we doubled them. We doubled the number of fouls. I've, I've got the game pull up. Let's take a look. I, at halftime, I think it was 10 to 4. We have we uh, had- 16 to us and 11 to them. Not quite double, but we definitely had more of them. 
It was close. Yeah. But or closer than I thought. But yet the, at I halftime, mean, it was like 10 to four, I believe. Well, and I, I, th- I think I think uh, obviously Honduras started fouling more once we started putting some goals away. So, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was no, that, I don't disagree with you. There were needless fouls and there were dumb fouls. I mean, the same thing, I guess, in the process. But absolutely. No, I agree with you on that point. And you're right about the whole thing, uh, the difference between first half, second half again. First half, no one's willing to take a shot outside or near the, outside the box. Second half, people are willing to take shots yeah. outside I mean, the box. Well, well we had a, we had a Adams with a shot. Acosta had a shot outside the box. And, 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 not, and again, I'm not saying all those shots that occurred. I mean, I think there may have been another one that I may have missed. But I'm not saying those shots – were the best option or even the best shots in general, or it may not have even amounted much in, in, in all honesty, but it, it forced the keeper to sit back and forced them to pay attention to what might occur. Um, Adam's shot resulted in a PK or PK, sorry, a uh, corner kick, which didn't amount to much in that sense, but at least we're taking those chances. It, it creates opportunities. We don't have to try to, dribble three or four people into the box and try to lay it off for an easy tap into the six, you know, sometimes it's just fine to rip a shot. Yeah. And just getting back to Sergeant one more time, <laughs> the difference between Aronson and Sergeant is so vast mentally at this point. It's so obvious that Aronson functions with, he's not self-conscious. All right. Aronson plays on instinct um on just sort of a a raw go button and sergeant overthinks things and i hope we can get him to another level where he's not playing so self-consciously because that's what i'm seeing and i know starting in the first half of a game or starting a game you know everyone's nervous when you first get on the field i get it but if this continues he's lost his job he's lost his job to peppy and if mm-hmm. you pl- hope to play out wide, he's lost his job to Aaron's. I'm, as well. I'm sorry. He has, he has no chance to play out wide. If all of our players are healthy and not um, breaking COVID restriction rules, there's no <laughs> chance in hell that that Sergeant plays out wide for us, unless we just need more, more uh, striker esque players, if you will. Or if we play a two man striker, that's another option, I guess, but we'll see what happens with that. But as a whole, well, we have we have four, we have four solid five uh, possible options out wide. There's no way Sergeant cracks over Polisic, Reyna, Wea, Conrad, Aronson. Those are all five people that are ahead of him in the winger spot. So at this point, he's contending only for that center striker role. And as you mentioned, I think, in all honesty, I think Pepe out uh, outplayed him and outperformed him and showed a better performance that we've seen as a center striker. And I think uh, Pepe, Pepe's definitely moved up. In the hey, hey. I think he's he's, he's going to be our, he, in my my opinion. If we had a game tomorrow, he's my lock starter. Did we both have Pepe up top? I think For this we game, did. yes, we did. I think so. yeah, we both picked Pepe, Pepe to start mm-hmm. up top in this game. So cheers to us! Hell yes! All right, we got it right again. All right, nothing mm-hmm. that it uh, happens. Other people <laughs> predicted it. Other people wanted it. They too, wish so. that we predicted it. That's a big difference. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, I just want to get back to that thing uh, about, you know, the urgency and effort thing, just real quick, because the all the fouls that I mentioned in the first half, there were 10 of them, I believe, and there were six mm-hmm. more in the second half. To me, that's indicative of panic cocaine ball. That is spazzy ball. And that's all I'm saying. That's so- what I saw. So... You know, and then mm. the change came in the second half and Burhalter said, this shit ain't working and I know it and I better do something. And I did not expect him to do this, but he did it. He brought in three new players, changed the formation. And guess what? Everything fucking turned out. Okay. Right. So it was, it was, it was night and day clearly. Um, and whether or not it should have been that way to begin with, I think, uh, again, I still think the three-back option would have been a viable option if we had played, I don't know, a diff- different personnel in general. But what, it, it's definitely it's definitely clear that when the when the subs came in, our, our, our team just started performing, hands I down. You, I tell you what, you're, the three in the back would work in a 3-5-2. 
I don't think it works as a three, four, three, because it's just another fucking warp version of his four, three, three in many ways, more or less. That's because yeah. the way he operates it as moving, you know, one of the backs comes up and becomes a midfielder. The other one stays back and he's it's you got a back four essentially. So, I, I, you know, I don't know. I just don't. I think two up top is important at this point because and, yeah i think a lot saw. of times he he just he just thinks too much <laughs> that uh, and not, that's not all good thinking but i think he thinks of it too much instead of just going out and playing a formation that works with our players yeah he's overthinking it he always does that's greg he overthinks it and that can get you after a while and it got us in the first two games he got out managed in both of those games mm-hmm. my opinion um one thing game, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, and he fixed it this game. He came yeah. up with a solution at halftime and it worked. And it not only worked, it was demonstrative. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a four one victory. Yeah, and uh yeah, I mean you gotta give you gotta give Burhalter some props here for him to recognize that well, I totally fucked that first half up. Mm. Let's make some changes, go back to this, and I'm gonna talk to my team in the halftime. Get them moving a little more and in the right direction, you know. And I'm not, I, you know, I'm not saying that he deserves, you know, props for the entire game. I don't. I think this four-one victory is a little. Uh, it's not indicative to how Berhalter managed the uh, game as a whole. But I thought what, what was what was really cool, in all honesty, about the uh, second half with all the subs and stuff like that that came in, especially. Early on, he realized it was an issue, and he made the subs immediately. Rather than trying to force it until the 60th minute or whatever, he was like, this isn't working. Let's do this change. He made the change, and all the goals and all the assists came from subs in the second half. You don't think... Oh, no, no, mine, mine is Pepe. Mine is Pepe. I have to pick it back, actually. It's a big one. Pepe got, Pepe got a goal and an assist plus, a, in my opinion, a second assist from that last uh, for Legette's goal. But it was just, it was funny that all the goals and all the assists pro- minus Pepe's you don't were all think, from subs. You don't think in his own existential way, Greg was thinking Bruin at halftime and thinking, um, man, this fucking, uh, this fucking Brooks fucked up that, that whole formation part. And then Sergeant was awful. And then these guys are fucking me in the ass. So it was 50 You're out 50. to get me. <laughs> I think it was, I think it was 50 50. I think Greg said, well, 50% of the problem's me. The other 50% of the problem are those players. Cause you could come out in a four, three, three with who you had on the field. Minus sure. one change, one change would have made, but no, he said the players are fucking up too. So I'm not making one change and taking out one center back. No. I'm changing all kinds of shit. I'm changing. I'm taking Sergeant out too. Fuck Sergeant. He fucked up. Bellow. Fuck him. Even though I don't think Bellow played that bad, but yeah, he's just like fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. That was those were major. Fuck those guys. That that you take guys out at halftime. That's a major statement. That's basically saying mm. even though I'm changing formations, I don't think you're gonna work going forward. That's what I think. Well, I, I, I think the change of tactics and formation required multiple changes, not no, just it, one. No, it didn't. Brad. I don't. I don't. Well, I, you go to a four three three. You're still stuck with not stuck. You're still playing with uh, Pulisic, uh, Pepe, and Sergeant up top. And Sergeant did not was not having a good game as a right winger. That's just what quickly. I said. But That's I'm, why no. he got yanked. He got yanked because he played a shitty game. That's a statement. Well, you, you can you can make you can make the argument that the formation may have fucked him in that sense. Quite frankly, it fucked a lot of people. Um, but no, I agree with them taking him out. That's perfectly fine because I think Aronson would have made more sense to begin with. Again, personnel changes. There's there's definitely questionable ones at the very beginning of the game that I'm sitting there going like, huh, well, this is interesting. Because we even talked about that uh, concept when you look at uh, Pepe, you look at Sargent, you look at Pulisic, and you're th- I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, he's either going to be playing him out wide, which is can work, and we have – some fans who think that that should be his position. Uh, and then we also talked about the possibility of maybe we're playing two with the striker and plus six going to play more of a, a, a midfielder, if you will. 
not even no. a midfielder, just more of a 10, if you will. I know, and he didn't do it because so just, we, yeah. <laughs> we, we needed that link between our... It was some, yeah, that was definitely missing. But I'm just saying, maybe, in quite frankly, and I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from uh, Sargent's performance. It was a poor performance, and I, I have his grade marked accordingly. But I think the tactics definitely didn't play him any favors, and it didn't play anybody favors in that first half. That first half and, sucked balls. And that's all I'm saying, Brett, is that um, Burhalter didn't take responsibility for the fact that the reason Sergeant might have played like shit was because he set him up for failure. Well, that's on it, him. So basically what he was saying <laughs> at halftime was Brooks is shit. I had to take one CB out to change this formation. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to take anybody else out. A 4 3 3. Josh Sargent's played that position on the right a bunch of times for club and never country, but club. So he could have handled it. It was fine. But he said basically, nah, Sergeant, you're playing like shit. You're out. And Bello, you're playing like shit. You're out. And I'm putting in anti Robinson, who should have started the game anyhow, frankly. Well, I think, I think once you even made the subs, if you kept, let's say you kept Sergeant in there. You're still left that midfield trio, and I think when when you look at Sargent's performance as a four three three, or just as a winger in general, it's a bit different in tactics than what Berhalter's playing. And you had no midfield link. Now, in the sixty fifth minute, you you noticed uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I noticed that Acosta and uh, Adams switched positions, and then uh, yes. at that point, and then uh, Yedlin came in later, and Acosta pushed back into the midfield. But it changed even there. Even even after we we got the uh, the equalizer and we were still pressing, there was still a personnel change that had to occur that we were questioning at the very beginning of the game because we both didn't believe that Adams would be a right back. So nah. I think I think that changed, and then it was just it was uh, once once all the other pieces came into fruition, it was just different, you know, and that's what made the difference. It was different. And, you know, I honestly think in some ways, and this is going to be a controversial thought here. Um, it, was, it was an early gasp. Sorry. <laughs> I think we looked better without Pulisic. <laughs> I hate to say that, <laughs> but, you know, I think Pulisic often tries too much instead of just sometimes paying, uh, pl- playing the easy pass, e- easy pass, then make mm. a, a cut, make a make a run. So- Yes, I and I don't necessarily we. This is controversial because Pulisic definitely created a lot of opportunities. He was he was dangerous. He drew a lot of fouls, but again, to your point, and this is something we talk about, he doesn't need to take those extra two or three touches. Sometimes it's easier to beat a man, make the pass, make the run off the ball, receive the ball, and then move from there. And I think that's the difference between this cycle and last cycle. Is yes, he was a talented kid last cycle. But he wasn't like like the the focal point. Like people weren't folk like, like must get the ball to Pulisic. Must get the ball to Pulisic. People like, well, let's make the passes here, here, here. Oh, there's Pulisic. He's open. Poof, you know. Yes, he was so, a part. Of, he wasn't a part of the team. He wasn't. He was a part of the team then. Now yeah. he's Mister Superhero must who has to do play hero ball. All right, and we don't need hero ball. We need if if there's an opportunity. When times occur, yes, it's fine to play hero, hero ball. When times occur, but yes. most of the time, and to your point, most of the time, it'd be better if he just played the simple pass and ran off to the ball. The, the off the ball movement is what causes him to get open ninety percent of the time, most games. And so. with yeah, with his club for sure, mm-hmm. he isn't a hero at Chelsea. He knows when. There's three defenders in front of him, and he's like, yeah, it's not going to work. And guess what? It's not going to work against Honduras either. Now, it might work on occasion, Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're desperate and you need it. But we can't start the game playing like that. We can't start the game desperate. We got to start the game smart. And we got to say that's the percentages there uh, aren't going to. That's not going to happen for me. I might get past the first two guys. Third guy's got me covered. Mm-hmm. So again, um, Christian, please smoke a joint before the game or something, but calm down and you don't need to do it all. You don't need to do it all. There are other players there. There's Pepe, there's Sergeant, there's Aronson. Uh, I don't think they were on the, were they on the field on the, uh, at the same? Yeah, they were on the field mm. at the same time together. Yeah. Yes. Early you, second, don't, yeah. you don't need to do it all by yourself. You need to lift your head a little. Now, it's not like you had a bad game, and we'll get into the player ratings, but 
that's just something he needs to think about. Well, and looking at the different styles, and again, we'll get into this more, but looking at the different styles between this cycle and last cycle, last cycle, he, I think the stats, and I'm going off of pure memory here from earlier, you know, random Fox stats, but last cycle, Pulisic had something like seven goals and six assists. Like he was, he was instrumental in just about every goal we had. Yeah. But this cycle so far, and I know we're only three games into it. It's, it's early. Things may pick up later, and it definitely will. And I, I hope it will from him just, you know, realizing that, hey, I've got other players around me that are very talented, and I can rely on them, not necessarily having to rely on myself 100% of the time. So yep. I think there's a big difference between how last cycle Pulisic played and this cycle. And we had, we had results from last cycle Pulisic. We just need to start seeing those results this cycle. And if he just – plays it simple i think we'll start seeing those results from him or in general just even if it's not necessarily attributed to him i think if he like makes a simple pass and they make the cross and they get the goal that's still very much a a team uh team one goal there if he may, if he does that and that's what needs to happen so yep we'll so, see what happens we'll see what happens moving forward here we go here we are five points out we were hoping for seven at Minimum. least <laughs> we were open for nine at the most we got five we are sitting third in the table and you know it's not total doom and gloom greg just saved this fuck i mean a just a shitload of people saying that, that i'm they're already saying it right this guy needs to be fired well that's not going to happen now greg's going to take us into october he saved his, his, well, not his job, because I still don't think he might have, there might have been some serious talk in USA quarters had he lost the game, but he didn't lose the game. So, well, and, and you can, you can take a look at just how quickly he made the subs. I mean, look at any of his previous games and how, how, was there any other performance where he's made that quick of a change? It's well, never that, happened. He realized that he's obviously in the hot seat. You know, he, I know. Obviously, he won two trophies over the summer, but this is World Cup qualifying. This is vastly more important. And if if he doesn't get a result here, even a draw for that matter, it would have been massive. And would, he, may have been, been. he may have been shit canned. Yeah, it was possible. The discussion probably Ernie might have been sleeping rough at night. Mm-hmm. Ernie Stewart, that is. Um, I mean, I can only imagine Berhalter getting into the locker room before everybody else does at halftime. And, you know, he's, you no, know, he's already sharded his pants because he's <laughs> been so nervous. So he's getting there early so he can change his underwear, put new underwear. In. And then while he's doing that, he's like, wow, that was a shit show. Whoa, what a clown show. I got to fix this or else I'm gone. This is over. I just fucked this whole first half up. OK, so I'm going to blame a few people, take them out. And then I'm going to make a total formation change and put all kinds of new players in right at halftime. Three of them. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And it worked. (laughs) He still got a job and he's got clean underwear on now. So, I mean, it couldn't have worked out better for him. And thank God, Brett, we won this game. Not only did we win it, but at the end, we we killed them. And uh, I don't know. There's I don't know how much more there is to say, except for sometimes don't. Don't go for the gimmicks, dude. Just stick straight up with the players you got. You got quality players. And don't don't suffocate them with your mechanics and your your system. Let them play. And that's what we saw second half. We saw motherfuckers just playing, playing ball. And it worked. I, yeah. And I will say real quick, one sub, one sub reference here is I'm really shocked that um, that Roldan came in for Pulisic instead of somebody like Conrad. Yeah, me too. That shocked. I even wrote down like Pulisic slimping going down for <laughs> Conrad, and then all of a sudden Roldan coming. I scribbled him. And I'm like, nope, Roldan. Nope. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? And then I <laughs> okay, think the, whatever. I think the guy calling the game referenced some interview <laughs> or, or some talk that that um, that Greg had had with Roldan. And Greg was like, uh, rolled on. It's like, hey, man, I'm good enough to play on this motherfucking game, man. Put me on. Why am I not starting? And then Greg had to go like, hey, dude, you're just too valuable as a, you know, a sub. Super sub. 
So, ah, man, that was like, please <laughs> tell me that that discussion never really happened. Please tell me that Rodon did not insist that he was better than, I don't know, name a player, McKenney, Adams. And, you know, I, 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 he's not better than Legette in, in what Greg's system wants. He's not better in a cost in what Greg's system asks. So, you know, anyhow, that's probably too much information all right until the next time on the straight red card part two we're coming back with a much shorter fucking session for (laughs) sure and uh one would hope so it will be player ratings thank you for liking subscribing and sticking it oh you know in places that you enjoy until the next time cheers